It's election night in Pennsylvania. And with 82% of the vote in, as usual, Joe Biden has the highest winning percentage at 92% of the vote. And Donald Trump has 84% of the vote. Nikki Haley has about 17% of the vote. Now, Pennsylvania is a closed primary state, meaning only registered Republicans can vote in that primary. Every one of those Nikki Haley voters in Pennsylvania knows Nikki Haley is no longer a candidate for president, but they just couldn't bring themselves to vote for Donald Trump. Tonight, the United States Senate gave final approval to a $95.3 billion package, which includes aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. President Biden just released a statement that reads, in part, I will sign this bill into law and address the American people as soon as it reaches my desk tomorrow. So we can begin sending weapons and equipment to Ukraine this week. We'll be right back. Meantime, it is primary night in Pennsylvania for both parties, and while the Keystone State will have zero impact on who the presidential contenders are, it might be very well a deciding factor in who becomes the president and who controls the Senate. Brian Yenis live in Philadelphia with the very latest on results. Brian, good evening. Trace, good evening. Anti-Israel Democratic Congresswoman Summer Lee won her primary tonight in Pittsburgh handedly over her pro-Israel challenger. She was the first member of the squad to face the voters amid these growing anti-Semitic protests nationwide. Lee was also among the first to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. She opposed House uh, resolutions that condemned anti-Semitism and Hamas, and she voted against aid for Israel over the weekend. There are a lot of people who wanted to convince us that we could not be pro-peace and win in this district. This movement is a movement that disavows all forms of hate. We disavow in Western Pennsylvania every form of anti-Semitism or Islamophobia or anti-blackness. Republican Brian Fitzpatrick easily defeated his primary challenger, an anti-abortion activist. This seat should be competitive and important in deciding which, part, which party retains control of the House come November. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania's Senate race is officially set. Republican Dave McCormick will take on Democrat Senator Bob Casey. Both candidates ran unopposed. This race will likely decide the balance of power in the Senate. Turnout was low today in Bucks County and across the state, given the Lack of competitive races this primary. We caught up with voters, though, who explained what motivated them to come to the polls. The border. It is the inflation. The border and also all this um, anti Semitism. Everybody's so mad and angry today, but are they here to vote and say they're, you know, peace? No. President Biden and former President Trump won the primaries here. The rematch is set in what is likely to be the most pivotal race for Biden's reelection chances. By the way, the uncommitted campaign, which is pro-Palestinian, is hoping more than 40,000 voters today rode in uncommitted in a protest vote of President Biden's stance of Israel. We'll see. Trace. Brian Yenis live for us in Pennsylvania. Brian, thank you. Let's bring in Steamboat Institute fellow Kaylee McGee White, along with Maslansky and Partners President Lee Carter. Thank you for coming on. Lee, to you first. Like Brian was talking about, this uncommitted vote, right? Uh, somebody else vote. Do you look at that, Lee? Is that important when we look at Pennsylvania? Because it certainly doesn't have much impact on who the contenders are. It doesn't have a whole lot of impact, but I am looking for those votes that are saying we have no place to go, um, because I think it's actually going to show up when we have uh, we have third party candidates on the ticket. So it's looking to see what is the impact of RFK Jr. going to be? What is the impact of these other candidates going to be? And when you look at the polling in Pennsylvania, it actually ends up favoring Donald Trump if RFK Jr. is on the ticket. So if you see yeah. a lot of uncommitted come out there and vote, you're going to see it's going to be more likely that this kind of thing is going to favor. Uh, Donald Trump when it comes to the general election. We've been, Kaylee McGee, talking about, uh, you know, anti-Semitism the whole show. We've been looking at Summer Lee. She's the congresswoman in Pittsburgh. She's uh, part of the progressive. She's anti-Israel. It appears like she won her Democratic primary. Are you surprised by that? 
I am a little bit, and it's because, you know, the, the leftist movement, this uncommitted movement that's happening right now, it really does represent a fringe minority of voters. The vast majority of public polling shows that the majority of Americans largely mm -hmm. support Israel and that they're not all that concerned about the Gaza conflict in general. My yeah. family is a lot like the voters in Pennsylvania. They're blue-collar workers. They've worked in fa factories all their lives. This is just not at the top of their priority. And so I am yeah. surprised to see that a Democrat who has leaned so heavily into the leftist side of the argument is still doing well in that state. But we'll see. There's still several months left. I'd like to get both of your take on this. It's a quick question. It's about the judge in El Paso today who let the 140 or so migrants who stormed the El Paso fence, let them go. They're just not putting anybody in jail anymore, Lee. I think it just furthers the narrative that you're, you, you heard those voters in Pennsylvania talking about number one issue that's driving the polls. They're talking about immigration. You yep. see things like this. It's going to be more and more concerning to people. Um, and the more concerned they are, the actual more it favors Donald Trump um, when it comes to the general election. But this is a real problem for Democrats. Kayla McGee, what? Yeah, and it's not just an assault on our immigration system. It's an assault on law and order. They attacked law enforcement officers at the border. There were reports yep. that several of these migrants had knives and that they were hitting officers who were there. That is assault, and it should be treated as a crime. And so it's remarkable to see that no charges have been leveled against these immigrants. And it happens all the time. Kayla McGee-White, Lee Carter, thank you both for your time. Coming up, we will keep an eye on the anti-Israel protests across the country and check back in with Steve Harrigan. And where is the crime? The trial of former President Trump has a prosecution, a defense, even a defendant. But so far, nobody has been able to explain the actual crime. The former president calls it a fake case brought by a corrupt DA. We'll see what John Yu thinks next. And later in the nightcap, a new survey says 44% of adults like to snack in bed. Should they snack in bed? Is it allowed? What do you think? X and Instagram, we're coming right back with John Yu and the Trump trial. Re related to this topic, results uh, just in moments ago from a major Democratic primary race in Pennsylvania, where an anti-Israel incumbent Democrat, a member of the ultra-liberal so-called squad, has just survived a real challenge that no one thought would happen from a more moderate candidate, Congresswoman Summer Lee, for squad member to face an actual primary vote where her position on Israel and Gaza became a focal point. She represents Pennsylvania's 12th district, which includes the Pittsburgh neighborhood of Squirrel Hill, the site of the heinous Tree of Life synagogue shooting in 2018. Her opponent is a more moderate Democrat and local council member, Bhavani Patel, has gone after Lee in her ads and so has a super PAC supporting her. Summer Lee wants to dismantle the Democratic Party, undermine President Joe Biden, and even wants to abolish the police. It's not debatable, it's documented. And in this moment, Representative Summer Lee is opposing President Biden. She and the squad gave him the cold shoulder at the State of the Union, refusing to stand in support of his reelection. Lee voted against a resolution which ultimately passed in the House condemning, quote, the support of Hamas, Hezbollah, and other terror organizations at institutions of higher education. She also voted against a resolution condemning the October 7th attacks. Along with fe fellow Israel critics Rashida Tlaib, Cori Bush, and Elon Omar, the squad were out there during Biden's State of the Union in March, refused to take part in the standing ovations from other Democrats. Omar's daughter was just arrested at the Columbia protests in New York. Last month, Jewish leaders in Lee's congressional district delivered a letter rebuking her over her public statements and views towards Israel throughout the war and since the October 7th attack, accusing her of, quote, divisive language that they have found to sometimes be, quote, openly anti-Semitic. Politico reported that campaign signs for Patel in the district were often paired in front yards and on roadsides with signs reading, We Stand with Israel. Lee told the New York Times it should be seen as the only, it's not the only issue that was important. She has the support of the establishment. It's a heavily redistricted uh, district, and it's a very Democratic area. But she barely won it the first time, and of course, popular Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman has become very outspoken in his pro-Israel views. She's long been the favorite with everything happening on college campuses. 
not to mention the opposition of Jewish leaders in the community. The question was, would she survive? An upset was possible, and even a close call was going to lead people to have questions. But joining us now is News Nation Chief Washington Correspondent, moderator of The Hill, Blake Berman. Blake, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. So we're just getting in results tonight. Hey, uh, what does it look? It's looking like yeah. Summer Lee is going to survive this challenge. She will win this. Uh, this has been called by Decision Desk HQ just a little while ago, Dan. At, at last check, when I was looking at the numbers, about two-thirds of the precincts had reported, and she was up by some 13, 14 points, so a fairly uh, early call for Summer Lee tonight. I mean, look, you, you outlined a lot of it there, where she is and where the squad is. You're right. This was uh, a, a widely watched race just to see how she would fare in this primary. And she's going to cruise. By the way, I, I would add to that, not only was she backed by the squad, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for example, was campaigning for her uh, in the recent days. She was also backed by the top Democrat in the House, the leader, Hakeem Jeffries. So there was sort of a, a wide range of support for Summer Lee. Uh, she, she, she hasn't even been in Congress, Dan, for two years. She is just a freshman congresswoman. But, but this obviously a widely watched race to see how the uh, so-called, uh, you know, first so-called quote-unquote squad member would fare in, in the first primary this election season. And talk to us about the kinds of voters we're talking about here in this particular district in Pennsylvania. Are these very liberal? I mean, obviously, if they elect, it, you know, if they pick yeah. Summer Lee, it is a very liberal uh, district, at least as far as Democrats are concerned. This, yeah, this is the area uh, in Pittsburgh and then around Pittsburgh, southeast Pittsburgh area. This is Allegheny County, uh, for example. Most of the of the district, or some of it, is Allegheny County. That area in 2020 was basically a 60-40 split, Biden-Trump. So mm -hmm. it was an area that Democrats uh, easily, or the president, uh, easily carried in 2020. And, and Summer Lee uh, will cruise on into Congress in, in the general election. It's, it's not expected that, that this will be contested or close at all. All right. November. Blake Berman, thank you. Appreciate it.